On June 18, the African Regional Commission for Certification of Polio Eradication, an organ of World Health Organization, accepted Nigeria's wild polio virus free documentation after 30 years. The cheering news was all over the news, but a lot still needs to be done to achieve and sustain the status. That is our focus today on sound health. I'm Walasumbo Mudukwe. Welcome to the show. We begin today's edition with updates from COVID-19. The Nigerian Center for Disease Control and CDC has cautioned the public against the use of face shields without face masks because they are not effective in COVID-19 prevention. The NCDC added that face shield is not a fashion accessory and must be combined with a mask to provide significant protection. The agency explains that the face shield protects only the face, but face mask curbs the spread of respiratory droplets. The public is encouraged to wear face masks and ensure it covers nose and mouth with no gaps. NCDC has also announced activation of the Green Expert Lab Kaduna into the COVID-19 molecular laboratory network, bringing the number of labs to 39. The federal government has retained the nationwide curfew declared to curtail the spread of COVID-19 in the country, as well as lifted the ban on interstate travels. Operators can now operate within approved hours. Schools have been directed to reopen for terminal classes, that is primary 6, GSS3 and SS3 only, while domestic flights are also to begin operations. Boss Mustafa added that committed to striking a delicate balance between lives and livelihood, President Mohamed Buhari has carefully considered and approved that with the exception of some modifications, phase 2 of the East lockdown will be extended for another four weeks, that is from 30 June to 27 July 2020. Back here in Lagos, the state government has received a 150-bed extension at the Infectious Disease Hospital Yaba. The donation was made by the private sector coalition against COVID-19. The state government has also expanded its COVID-19 response capacity with the accreditation of seven private laboratories to boost its testing capacity and three private hospitals for case management. Commissioner for Health Professor Akin Abayomi said that the private laboratories were selected through a rigorous accreditation process and as the state attempts to open up various aspects of its economy, it is imperative that COVID-19 test is widely available to members of the public. Three private health facilities have also been accredited and approved by Hifama for the treatment of COVID-19. The state government will also be transitioning to the phase of community-based treatment and inclusion of home care into the state's strategic response. Under the home care arrangement, mild to moderate cases will be managed and isolated at home, while critical to severe cases will be treated at COVID centers. Over 24,000 cases, more than 8,000 discharges and above 500 deaths have been reported in Nigeria. And worldwide, there are more than 10 million cases, over 500,000 deaths and above 5 million discharges recorded. Sound health on Lagos Cell Vision. Nigeria was one of the four countries racing to end the polio virus. The good news is that Nigeria is about to get a certification for a polio free status. Today, Dr. Sunji Funsho, the Chairman National Polio Plus Committee, will share his expertise on the country's roadmap to certification for a polio free status. Welcome to the show, Doctor. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, Dr. Funsho is joining us via Skype. Sir, what does the certification mean for the country? Uh, so the certification for the country is, uh, uh, is a validation of the hard work that has gone on uh, for just 30 years now. Okay. 30 years now, internationally, but uh, essentially 20 years in Nigeria. 
Nigeria, uh, in our efforts to make sure that no child is ever being paralyzed by the right COVID virus. So, uh, we, we have worked very hard, not only to help you get here before you know, some of the other countries. Uh, so, at least for now, it is time to pat ourselves on the back. But then, you know, start to now work towards, you know, keeping ourselves, you know, uh, in good status of a polio free country. Okay, this is not the first mm. time we got a certification. We did in 2015. What is the difference? Sir? Well, well the, 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 difference, the difference was that, you know, uh, in 2015, we were not certified a polio free country. We were just removed from the list of endemic countries, okay. which is quite, you know, different. Now we have certification. The certification uh, with all the necessary documentation uh, by the Africa's uh, Regional Certification Committee that has shown that the, the possibility of having any viral COVID virus from any part of this country uh, resurging is zero. That puts us in a new status entirely okay. of a country that is certified polio free. In other words, the only way that polio can get back into Nigeria is if it's imported from outside the country. And that's a huge, huge difference. Okay. Does this mean that the country does not have the strain? And was there a final visit to determine the polio free status? Well, uh, in the last six to nine months, the, the African Regional Certification Committee uh, has been. Uh, going around Nigeria, verifying uh, the status, you know, of our efforts, you know, looking at you know documents related to program, related to surveillance, related to the quality of staff uh, in the field. And of course, you know, ensuring also that uh, our disease surveillance and notification, you know, system is robust, not to have missed any case of polio. So. Uh, they just did not uh, sit down and, and decide. Okay. They did a thorough examination of everything that is on ground and also examined documents uh, that give us insight into the work we have been doing so far uh, to get rid of polio from Nigeria. It's the result of that you know, effort you know, that was multifaceted that led to the final uh, removal of Nigeria uh, as a polio uh, endemic country. So now we are a polio free country. In other words, the chances of any polio virus in Nigeria is zero. So it's not likely at all that any child will be paralyzed by the white polio virus in Nigeria, except it is imported from abroad. Okay, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency Executive Director, Dr. Faisal Shraib, welcomed the development. However, they are, he assured Nigerians that all actions, particularly vaccinations, would be intensified to avert a resurgence. What's your take on this? Well, yes, I mean, there was very good intention on the part of the uh, National Primary Health Care Development Agency. Uh, 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 and we need to support them as much as possible because, you know, there has been a lot of efforts to strengthen our primary health care system in this country. Uh, the, the, the first, uh, uh, most recent, I would say, was the Bamako Initiative, uh, which was an initiative, you know, of uh, ministers of health from all African countries, you know, meeting in Bamako, uh, to, to look for policies that will help, you know, the, the uh, continent to improve, you know, his primary health care system. And at that time, the hope was that there will be uh, an improvement overall, because that is where the national health actually resides. In 2001, we had the Abuja Declaration uh, that, uh, of all health ministers, again, that uh, made it uh, the target for countries to devote 15% of their budget to health. As I speak, our budget for last year was just 3.9 percent. It has been marginally increased uh, okay. to, uh, I think, 4.5 percent in, in the budget for 2020. We are nowhere near there. So we need to put our money where our mouth is by 
continually increasing uh, resources that we put to primary health care. We also have the issue of manpower. Uh, without funding, you cannot create the necessary manpower. Thankfully, because of the funds that were expended on our polio eradication effort, we have a huge uh, number of human resources who are working uh, uh, public health uh, physicians and uh, other paramedical workers who can help, but they need to be funded. Uh, we hope that this legacy will you know, transfer uh, from where we are now to the, all the new measures that the government is setting up uh, to ensure that the primary health care center uh, becomes the cornerstone of our health care. Okay, intensified surveillance can help reduce susceptible polio compatible cases in Nigeria. What strategy will be in place to check um, reoccurrence if you are to give uh, the stakeholders advice? Well, uh, the, 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 the major tool we have is actually routine immunization. That is why I'm strength, you know, stressing on primary health care. The major tool we have is ensuring that every uh, mother or caregiver has access to a primary health care center. Um, we have been doing a lot of uh, work, a lot of documentation. I recall during the time tenure of uh, so, Ransom Kulti as Minister for Health, 85 uh, to 92. He did a lot of work in strengthening our primary health care system. Uh, when he left office, everything, you know, went, you know, to sleep. And only in the last dispensation of the Minister of Health, Professor Adewale, that uh, the 10,000 health, you know, uh, primary health care center uh, was uh, initiated. We have not seen much of that, you know, right now. And there are quite a number of initiatives like that. There is the current, you know, uh, provisions of business health care uh, provision fund, which is currently being revised, you know, by the uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, we need to be consistent uh, to ensure that we have a robust primary health care system that is accessible to the majority of population who actually require it, because that is where 75% of our health care takes place. Uh, within that context, um, polio eradication you know, will continue to be sustained. And of course, we'll make a lot of gains for other uh, preventable childhood diseases. Okay, for a polio virus to be certified as eradicated worldwide, at least three years of good surveillance without uh, cases needs to be achieved. Though this period may need to be longer for a strain like um, World Polio Virus 3 where a lower proportion of those infected demonstrate symptoms or if fewer samples stay positive. What's your take on this, sir? Well, you know, in our surveillance system, we not only look, you know, for paralysis in children, we also check for the virus in the environment. Uh, the WHO is... Uh, uh, very, very adept at doing this. They have sites across the country where they take samples uh, of uh, sewage-related, uh, you know, water and check it for the virus. We have not seen any virus in our environment for that duration of time as well. So it's a, it's a combination of finding the virus in children and also uh, checking to make sure that the virus actually does not exist in our environment and the best place to find it is in our, in our sewage system and this is going to continuously be done until the world is certified polio free okay we know about herd immunity when many hosts are vaccinated especially simultaneously the transmission of wild virus is blocked and the virus is unable to find another susceptible individual to infect Vaccination is still a challenge in some parts of the country due to myths and misconceptions, communal beliefs, gated communities during immunization, lack of basic health infrastructure as well as insecurity. What can be done to surmount these challenges? I think already, you know, for us to get to the stage we got to, uh, we have evolved a lot of strategies, you know, to overcome some of these challenges. I think one of the major ones actually is to solicit the support you know of our traditional leadership and they have been a major game changer uh, as far as education in this country is concerned uh, working you know uh, through the 
traditional leaders council you know for eradication of polio and uh, other you know vaccine preventable diseases they have continuously ensured that the rank and file in their domain appreciate the need so it's just a very tiny minority who are holding out you know where on all fronts whether for traditional reasons or for religious reasons but you know they are they are so few in number that if we get the majority immunized because the coverage we are looking for if you get 90% of children you know immunized you know against you know the white polio virus uh, even if the virus come back in the environment the chances of reintroduction of polio into this country is almost zero so so we have worked assiduously and that was one of the game changers of course uh, there are other strategies that were evolved particularly uh, in uh, areas you know that uh, we have security uh, challenges of uh, using uh, either civilian joint civilian task force or in, in collaboration with the military who in some cases in fact go to insecure areas to minimize the children themselves so those are the kind of measures and collaborations that uh, we have developed which we can also transfer to other interventions when it comes to uh, health issues okay as the chairman of the polio plus committee what next after this well uh, i think uh, i believe that uh, right now we need to start refocusing our energies in ensuring that routine immunization is built up and that children below the age of two but more importantly you know uh, uh, children below the age of five get all the immunizations which includes the polio vaccine to do that efficiently the government must provide the resources but at the same time people need to be educated so there's a need to communicate you know with the population about the need immunization uh, uh, and you know the safety of these you know vaccines and the benefits in the long term of ensuring that their children are covered you know by immunization i think you know uh, if we do these two things provide the resource and accessibility to these vaccines and provide the education to drive demand you know for these uh, services and interventions i think you know we'll be on the right road to ensure that uh, we keep polio at zero in Nigeria until such a time that the world is certified polio free. Okay, before I let you go, Dr. Funjo, what is your advice? Are there any plans to incorporate or to allow uh, children in the displaced units, internally displaced persons, are there plans to incorporate them into the system for immunization? Well, uh, as far as I know, currently, you know, all all IDPs, you know, have uh, health facilities, uh, most of them run by, by UNICEF, uh, where children are immunized, you know, where even antenatal care, you know, takes place. And when we also do our supplemental immunization activities, we we'll go house to house, IDPs are not left out. They are part of the micro planning to ensure that every child below the age of five, you know, gets the vaccination. So they are not left out at all. They are within the plans. Uh, for our supplemental immunization activities and also for routine immunization. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Funcho, for your time and expertise on today's show. Thank you for having me. We have been talking to Dr. Tunde Funcho, the chairman of the National Polio Plus Committee of Rotary International on how to achieve and sustain a polio-free status in Nigeria. The show continues with trending health reports.
With so sound health on Lagos Cell Vision this week, the world observed post-traumatic stress disorder day, a mental health disorder that is experienced by few persons after a traumatic event. In this package, we highlight how to cope with the disorder. we say thank you on today's episode of Sound Health. Remember, it takes a collective effort to achieve a polio-free status. Ensure every child gets immunized periodically for a disease-free country. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS to 08035-826603 or follow us on social media at LTV Social, hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice.